features of the spur gears. Does anybody have any questions? Any of those questions they want me to go over? So some of the ones where you had to take the information to find other information to get to where you wanted to go. Some of those could be a little bit tricky. We'll do maybe a couple of them here quick. Uh, let's do number 42. Number 42, we are given endum 0 0.142, actually 43, not 42. We're given the addendum 0 0.0455 and the pitch diameter Our pitch diameter is just D and addendum is just little a. 1.0455. And this is just D. We defined number T. Versus just N. So again, if we look at number of teeth in our table or formulas starting on page 247 there, none of the formulas for the number of teeth are pitch diameter. Well, they have pitch diameter, but it requires the pitch and or the circular pitch. You don't have the pitch or the circular pitch. So to find the number of teeth, we need to go a different route. So we have the addendum and the pitch diameter. We need to look for something that uses both of those. We look up at the addendum and actually find the circular pitch from that. And for the pitch diameter won't give us any of this. So we're going to use the addendum here. So we have a formula for the addendum it says A is equal to 1 over P, 1 over the pitch. Now this is the one of the asterisks one. This is the 14 and a half degree convolute here. Um, it's the only thing this formula applies to. We're assuming that that's what we have. Well, we have that A, the addendum is 0. 0.0. 455. That equals 1 over P. So I chose this problem for a good reason. The item we're solving for is on bottom of a fraction. You can't solve for something that's in the bottom of a fraction. Well, we could multiply by P on both sides to get it out of there and, and work through it that way. That's a lot of work. So the reason I wanted to do this problem is there's a, a shortcut we're going to use, especially when we get into the trig functions. That's simply to make it into a proportion. Now that it's a proportion, we can solve this for P by simply cross multiplying and dividing. Two numbers that are diagonal are the one and the one, so it's just one times one. And we divide by the point 0.0455. Divide that out, we get that P. 21.978. So we've got a pitch of 21.978. Now we can go back to find number of teeth because the number of teeth, one of our formulas for number of teeth is the pitch times the pitch diameter. We have the pitch of 21.978. We have the pitch diameter of 1.0455. So again, since this is a number of teeth, we're expecting this number to come out maybe not exactly a whole number because of rounding, but really close to a whole number. 22.978. is close enough to a whole number for rounding that to 23 teeth. Any questions? Is 
today's topic, our last topic of Unit 2 here, is metric spur groups. I'm going to compare them to standard spur gears. The standard spur gears have this thing called pitch that we've been talking about. And pitch is, again, simply the number of teeth divided by the pitch diameter. Units here are literally number of teeth per inch of diameter. Now, if you convert that to circular pitch, circular pitch is the number of teeth per inch of circumference, which is really what we're interested in. That, that's actually the space between the teeth, but it's teeth per inch rather than an inch, inches between teeth. In the metric module system, do something called the module. In the module, diameter divided by the number of teeth. Notice it's just the opposite. Pitch was number of teeth divided by diameter. Module is diameter divided by number of teeth, which actually makes more sense. Diameter divided by the number of teeth is inches per tooth. So when we change that into a circular module, or for some reason it's still called a circular pitch, um, the metric system changes into a circular pitch, it actually does give you distance from the center of one tooth to the center of the next. Now it's at the pitch diameter, not at the, the end of the tooth, but it actually is describing the distance between the teeth. Purpose of both of them, both the module and the pitch, is to define how far apart the teeth are to determine if the gears are supposed to match. Two gears to match. They must have Pitch or module if they're measured in metric. And it must be exactly the same. Um, even if you're a thousandth of an inch different in your spacing between teeth, a thousandth probably wouldn't hurt you, but even just a couple of thousandths of an inch different in your spacing between teeth, it might work okay at low speeds, but if it gets up to high speeds, they're going to bind up and they're going to going to break something. So for our metric module system, we have a table on page 250, giving all of our formulas for the modules, metrics. Um, let's take a look at some example formulas that I want to do here. If I have a gear as a module, by the way, the abbreviation for module is little m of 9 millimeters. And I'm told it has 24 teeth. Let's find some things about it. First, let's find the pitch diameter. Module, little m, is the diameter divided by the number of teeth. The diameter there is the pitch diameter. So I can find that pitch diameter simply by plugging in 9 for my module and 24 for my number of teeth. And to solve for d here, I'm just going to multiply by 24. Oh, what's 9 times 24? 216, I believe. Well, that's 216 millimeters because my, my module was in millimeters. 
this this is And what if I want to find the circular pitch? Find my circular pitch from back to my chart on page 250 here. Get this formula memorized, but I don't for some reason. Circular pitch is just your module over 0.3183. This has always been one of my beefs with like the machinist handbook is calculations is they do stuff like this that isn't really kind of confusing. Um, where does the point three one eight three come from? Well, it is just one divided by pi. So this really could have just been the module times pi. Get the same answer. I'll show you here. We'll put the module in here. Module is 9 divided by 0.3183. 9 divided by 0.3183. We get 28.275. That is millimeters. In T. Now, if I had taken 9 times 3.1416, which is what they use for pi, guess what? I get pretty much the same answer. I don't know why they do it as divided by 0.3183. And it happens all the time. You, know, you saw in your cutting speed formula, you did that 3.82. Well, that's just 12 divided by pi. Oh, well. You know, I'll stop my client complaining. So, anyway... <laughs> The next thing we want to look for then, let's say we want the outside diameter. So is our outside diameter. If I look back on my table for that, DO is the module times N plus 2. This is a standard. We saw a similar formula for the outside diameter in the, the regular pitch, the standard spur gears. Um, your standard when you design a spur gear, the outside diameter is just what you would get if you add two more teeth to it. Our module is nine. We had, what's our number of teeth again? 24. Four plus two. Well, that's nine times 26, which gives us uh, 224, I believe. Find the addendum. So if we look back at our formulas here, the addendum formula for addendum is just the addendum is equal to the module. So the addendum here is nine millimeters. That one I always thought was weird, but that's just a quirk. That's when they do that. Do that design of you know the outside diameter is just the teeth spacing plus two compared to the pitch diameter. Um, and them just always ends up being equal to the module. There's a reason they designed them that way. Set them up that way. Working depth. So we have to be careful. WD, capital WD is the whole depth. That's the complete depth of the tube. Working depth is DW. Or WD, actually. Sorry, I missed chart. W with a little d, not a big d. And the working depth is just times the module. Or two times the nine millimeters. So 
when a metric per gear, the working depth is always twice the addendum. Makes sense. If the two gears mesh together, they should have the same addendum. So working depth is twice that. And then finally, we're going to find, this is something we didn't look for in the standard gears. Our tooth thickness, if we look back here, capital T is our tooth thickness. 1.5708 as the module. Once again, 1.5708, that's just pi divided by 2. Five seven zero eight times our module is still nine millimeters. Fourteen point one three seven. So one three seven two. For standard spur gears, we tend to go to four decimal places. For metric spur gears, we do tend to only go to three. Any questions on those? But for the test that's coming up tomorrow, which I believe I've already got it posted on Blackboard, um, you need to know your cutting speed formulas. So your cutting time formulas. You know how to use them together if necessary. If I give you the type of tool, the type of material, um, what your surface cutting speed is, you need to be able to calculate your RPMs and then use those RPMs to calculate how long it would take to cut if you had your feed rate. Then, of course, all these spur gear formulas. One formula that not given in these tables that I think is very important. Let's say we have two gears. Let's say gear A has a diameter 4.800 inches. Gear B has a diameter 3.400. Center to center distance. Point nine seven five inches. I want to find the pitch. This is not a formula that's given in the packet, but working depth. is equal to radius of the first gear plus the radius of the second gear minus, let's put it as C, center to center distance. So the radius of gear A, 0.4 inches, just half of the 4.8 inch diameter, Radius of gear B is 1.7 inches, half of the 3.4 inch diameter. So my working depth down here is 2.4 plus 1.7 minus 3.975 inches, which is 0.125 inches is what we get here, that working depth. That comes from this formula right here, knowing the radius of the two of each of the gears. Tracking that center to center distance. Now that we have that working depth, we can go back to our formulas and we can find the pitch. 
So from working depth, we don't have the pitch itself is not defined off of working depth, but we can take our working depth is equal to 2.157 by the pitch. Well, once again, we have that situation where the number we're looking for is on bottom, because we're going to put the point 125 in for the working depth. 0.157 over P still leaves P on bottom. So to solve for P, I'm just going to make it a proportion again. Put the 0.125 over 1, and I'll cross multiply and divide. 1 times 2.157 divided by the 0.125. 1 times 2.157 is just 2.157. Divided by 0.125 gives us a pitch of 17.256. So for today, your homework is going to be to finish up that packet. Fifty-four, fifty-five through sixty-three of the odds. Not too many problems there, but it gives you time to go back and study some of the other ones. So tomorrow, the quiz is posted out there, or the test is posted out there. Um, you can either complete it and submit it in Blackboard, or you can bring it in on Monday next week and do it here. Have the test done. You don't have to be in class tomorrow. I will log in in case anybody has any questions. But if nobody's there within the first 10 or 15 minutes, I'll probably sneak off and do stuff, something else. Um, you guys are in the classroom here tomorrow, right? So I'll be logged in the whole class, but I might be off doing things around my office for any case. If you need anything, you can just give me a yell. With that, I'll let you guys have the last 17 minutes here or so to get started on the homework to do it.